next up, uh, Itzuk Avram and Nir Goldschlager uh, about a talk about uh, killing a bounty program twice. Please welcome them. So, uh, hi and welcome to our uh, Hack in the Box uh, talk. Yeah, um, I'm Isaac Zuk Avram, uh, and this is uh, Nir Goldschlager. Um, we are doing the uh, King and Bounty program twice because uh, we did the first one on uh, Keto last month, but this time we added additional uh, bugs so we can uh, uh, kill it twice. Uh, so, uh, so I'm Zuk. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO at Zimperium. Zimperium is an innovative startup that does uh, security for mobile phones. Uh, we we try to take the uh, current status of security and uh, change it to make the world a more secure place. Uh, we recently uh, launched, or a few quarters ago, we launched Anti. Anti is uh, the Android network toolkit. Uh, we're going to soon uh, launch the uh, uh, iOS version. So uh, keep a close eye, eye on that. And uh, we have actually very good security uh, stuff coming ahead for uh, mobile phones. So uh, keep a close uh, eye on that if you're interested. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, this is my Twitter nick uh, and on my uh, blog. Uh, if someone has any inquiries, uh, feel free to contact me via email. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Neil Goldschlager. Uh, I'm working in the security industry for about uh, eight years. Uh, today I'm working at uh, Avnet Security Consulting Company. Uh, Avnet is one of the biggest uh, companies in Israel. Uh, my main job is a web application penetration test. Uh, I also found uh, lots of bugs in uh, popular websites, for example, uh, critical vulnerability in PayPal uh, that allow me to gain access to any finance reports of, uh, of PayPal users. Uh, today we are going to show you uh, bugs in uh, Google services. Uh, we want to show you how any of you can find these kind of bugs. Uh, you just need a creative mind uh, to find these kind of bugs. And uh, you can follow me uh, on Twitter, uh, Neil Goldschlager. And that's all. So indeed, our, uh, our goal here uh, today is uh, make you think different. So uh, let's say you're scanning uh, some kind of a bug bounty program with the usual apps, the usual uh, uh, programs to scan a website. Uh, you would probably not find anything because already other people did that or already internal teams did the same testings. So you have to check with your methods, your, uh, your well, do different stuff that programs cannot do automatically. So the more manual you go into inspection of each parameter, so you'll uh, be able to find more stuff. We'll first do an overview of uh, web application vulnerabilities. And uh, well, in our target, our target in this uh, presentation would be a Google Bounty Program. Uh, after that, uh, we will do uh, know your enemy. So we'll spy on the enemy. You will see how we get more information about uh, how to find real bugs using some basic intelligence uh, we can use uh, in order to find the next uh, spot, which is a uh, weak spots. Once we find weak spots, we'll try to repeat those and try to do it repetitive all over in other services, which will have the same kind of bugs, the same class of bugs. Uh, we'll try to do as many demos as possible. Uh, in our uh, assessment of, uh, of this bug bounty program, we found a total of more than 100 uh, bugs. Most of them weren't critical, but uh, some were very critical that can affect any and each one of you directly and without your uh, acceptance. So reasons for bug bounty program. Uh, so you first have the, uh, the money. You get paid for doing uh, uh, research and uh, the vendor is giving you some kind of basic money uh, for, uh, for finding those vulnerabilities. Uh, the second one is uh, a credit. So uh, when you find a vulnerability, you report to them, you get credit from the vendor. Uh, you get the credit page, you get the Google Hall of Fame, you get the Twitter, uh, 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 bug bounty uh, program, you get it everywhere. It's, uh, it's written all over, so uh, uh, he has the credits all over. Uh, but you know what? Credit is not really interesting because, um, uh, and uh, money is not really interesting because they don't pay much for those bugs. 
uh, they pay for a web application box from 500 bucks, which is uh, considered a good amount, to 3,000 bucks. Uh, and in the black market, for example, you can probably find for a Google service box much higher than that. But we don't do black market stuff. Uh, we are a white hat researcher, so uh, we feel uh, it's uh, our uh, need to report and they can fix and there's nothing else we can do, but that's the current status. But we are afraid other researchers are not doing the same as we do. So uh, I guess there are other bugs that are not being reported. Uh, bug bounty programs uh, started in uh, 1995 by Netscape uh, and later on, almost 10 years later, uh, with Firefox. Firefox uh, continued to the Netscape uh, methods, so it's uh, kind of obvious that it happened. Uh, later on, ZDI, a zero day initiative, uh, started to do the, the pwn to own. Uh, well, they did a bug bounty sort of, so you can report until then you report it to Microsoft, for example, and you got like one, just credit for who discovered this, uh, this bug, but later on they did this sort of uh, selling to vendors and then they get you uh, paid and give you like uh, bonuses, like uh, flights to uh, Black Hat and stuff like that. They did that and later on they did the pawn to own contest. Um, uh, in 2010, first, Google started to give bug bounty programs for uh, web applications and not just uh, software uh, applications like ZDI and pawn to own uh, Later on, in 2011, Facebook joined them and uh, did the same. So now you can find in Google and Facebook in Salesforce and other services and you can get paid for finding bugs. But the thing you have to know is you'll not find bugs if you'll just use the normal uh, scanners. You have to do more than that. So the first thing we need to do is know our enemy. Our enemy in this uh, case would be maybe Google. They're not really our enemies. They're in the same building as we are. So uh, we know they can uh, beat us, but uh, we'll be careful with them. Um, so our enemy is not Google. Our enemy is the other researchers. Uh, for example, uh, Masato, Kinagua, Neil Paul, uh, and those guys are finding lots of uh, Google bugs all the time. So if they don't find something, uh, we will find it. And if we don't find it, they will find it before us. So it's a race for time. And uh, basically, you have to find the bugs before they do. Because uh, uh, bugs that already got reported, for example, will get uh, prioritized to them. and. Uh, you know, you have to, if you want to get money slash credit from that, you have to do it first. So you have to keep an eye on, uh, on the others and to see what they're doing in order to uh, maybe uh, get ideas from them and use it on your uh, bug findings. So let's say, for example, they are doing uh, some kind of uh, uh, blog post, for example, about certain vector they found to be vulnerable in one of Google uh, services. You would take that vector of attack and use it in other services. Uh, for example, you have uh, so someone found a, a bug in calendar. Maybe the same kind of vector of attack. Uh, if you use it in other service, then you'll find other bugs that weren't discovered yet. So spying on their blog is a very good uh, uh, method to do so. But uh, in order to find original bugs, uh, which is probably more important and more beneficial, uh, you have to learn the company. So you have to, to, to find services that weren't checked yet. You have to find services that uh, nobody else has scanned yet because all, all of the Google services would be mostly like critically scanned by lots of people internally and externally. Uh, if you find small services, sm services that nobody else touched it yet, then you have more, uh, uh, y your chances of finding vulnerability are much higher. So. We'll check for successful acquisitions by Google and uh, untested, less secured web applications by Google. Uh, we'll try to find a multi-vector, which means we'll try to find vectors that are repetitive in other services, which we can use for our uh, benefit uh, in order to find uh, in other services, like I said. So if you want to learn Google, you have to use Google. <laughs> to find information about Google. So you look at, you'll Google Google successful acquisitions. 
and you'll get uh, the list of acquisitions by Google. You'll get a list of uh, lots of companies. Google is acquiring many companies all the time. So basically, they, uh, they buy a company per week. So every week, uh, since 2010, they bought a company, which means a lot of companies that were uh, very fast integrated into their services without really being checked like other internal uh, developed uh, services. So that's very interesting, but we'll keep that to later on. Um, new services, so new services are being tested less, like Google Null, I'm sure uh, not much of you have heard what is Google Null, uh, but you'll be amazed on how weird it even gets uh, in other names, in other services. So not every service of Google is Gmail or uh, or calendar. So there are small services that nobody even knows about. And uh, they are very vulnerable and they can uh, harm you in the same way a vulnerability in Gmail can harm you. So it's very important to look for those. Uh, subdomains, they have a, a specific way of uh, using a, a, their convention on uh, subdomains. We can check that. And we can check all the, the, the functions that they're using and to see where they're failing all the time, time after time, time after time, and then use it in other services and you'll find it works uh, very well. Um, so we'll repeat those spots and do that uh, again and again in uh, each and every service. So Google acquisitions, like you can see, since 2010, they bought a company every week. Every week, someone said, here you go, take 10, take 50, take 100 million dollars, give me your service. Uh, but not every company did the right uh, penetration testing on their products. Not every company uh, put all their efforts on the security. Some companies just wanted to be first. They want to be first, so uh, they develop fast, but you know, security comes later, at second stage sometimes, and. Uh, then you'll see all the mistakes that the design, the architecture uh, mistakes uh, people did there. So the, uh, we'll have a certain Google overview and our approach will be towards uh, mixed and logical issues. Uh, most of the bugs uh, that were found was uh, XSS, uh, but there were also privilege escalation and permission bypass um, and, well, even something special for the end. So uh, we reveal that later, but you have to understand, XSS is not just about stealing your account. XSS also means I can hack your computer. So basically when I run JavaScript code on your, uh, on your browser, it means game over because I can use it to run a client-side vulnerability to, uh, for example, a vulnerability in Flash or a vulnerability in uh, Chrome or Java to use it in order to hack your computer. And only recently, uh, several vulnerabilities had been discovered for client-side attacks, such, a, such as uh, Java, that, that was a, a logical bug, so uh, every execution of this bug would have been successful. So let's say I'm targeting you and I want to run a script on your uh, account. It's not just about stealing your Gmail. That's not as interesting as hacking your computer. So it even gets easier when you use uh, smartphones. Uh, so smartphones are much more vulnerable and client side vectors there are, uh, are the easiest. Uh, so, okay, uh, so the Google overview, you'll just look at the uh, convention first. So you'll see google.com forward slash calendar, Google Friends Connect forward slash, uh, google.com forward slash uh, Friends Connect. You'll also see subdomains for each one of them. You can see here in null, analytics, blogger, and other. So the subdomains for those would be the same .google.com. So it's calendar.google.com, uh, mail.google.com. Uh, so that's the same for the subdomains. Regarding the uh, convention for the support, you would find almost the same convention for any, any service. So if you find bugs there, if you see people complaining at the support about certain errors they got, maybe we want to check those errors because nobody else obviously did before. This is why they got into the support of Google. Uh, so uh, the first bug that I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, 
stored XSS vulnerability in uh, Google Calendar. Uh, Google Calendar is a service that allows uh, to uh, Google users uh, set a met uh, set uh, meetings. Uh, they use uh, nicely GUI. Uh, most of us uh, using this uh, service. Uh, Google Calendar is a very popular uh, service. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to talk about uh, general attacks ag against uh, Google Calendar. Uh, what does it mean, uh, general attacks? It means that uh, most of the people, when, uh, they, are, they, when they are trying to uh, find vulnerabilities in Google, uh, they just try to inject, for example, uh, XSS in uh, known fields. Uh, in a GET request or in a POST request. But if you want to find vulnerabilities in Google Calendar, uh, you must go in, uh, more deeper. Uh, you need to find some places that uh, other people didn't think of. For example, what happened if you delete your calendar? Or what happened if you unsubscribe your calendar? Uh, if, you if you look more uh, deeper, uh, you can find uh, vulnerabilities in uh, Google Calendar. So uh, the first bug, uh, so the vulnerability that uh, I'm going to show you is a stored XSS vulnerability that uh, executes on the client when the, when the victim uh, delete his own calendar. Uh, so uh, for now, it seems to be only a self-XSS, uh, XSS that only work on my account, because if I delete my calendar, the XSS will be executed only on my uh, own account. So we need to find a way to trigger it for a remote exploit. In the picture, you can see that I inject a XSS payload into the calendar name field. OK, so I create a new calendar and then inject a XSS payload into the calendar name field. And now we see that uh, it's only a self-XSS uh, because if I inject the XSS into my calendar name, then no one else can access to my calendar. It's only me. So I need to find a way to make it exploitable by using the sharing options. In a Google Calendar, you can share your calendar name. What does it mean sharing? It means that any user can share his calendar name, and later uh, the calendar uh, will be shown on the victim account. So in the picture, you can see the sharing process and the attacker need to provide the email address of the victim he wants to share his uh, calendar name. Okay, so I also found that the user must delete his calendar one till five times. Uh, why the user must delete his calendar one till five times for the text uh, to be work on the client? Because uh, after one till five times, the user uh, receive an error message from Google, uh, and then the access, our XSS uh, execute on the client. So we need to force the target to delete our uh, malicious calendars. So uh, we found that there is no sharing limit in Google Calendar. What does mean no sharing limit? It means that any user can share his calendar, for example, 100, 200 times. And uh, the user will get, uh, each em each, uh, will get the email for each sharing. And uh, the calendar will be added automatically on the victim account. The, the victim don't need to approve our calendar. Uh, this calendar will be automatically added. So we think about a creative way to exploit this issue by using a calendar spam. What happens if I'm sending, for example, 100 calendars to a user? Later, the user uh, see that he have uh, 100 calendars in, in his own account. And then he starts to delete each of them. So after the user uh, delete one till five times, uh, Google returns us an error message with our XSS payload. Uh, in the picture, you can see the error message uh, and the pop-up of the XSS attack that execute on the client when he decides to delete uh, my uh, malicious uh, calendar. And uh, game over. So uh, basically, so basically, what happened is uh, nobody else checked for the what happens if I'm deleting a calendar. Uh, so probably they did check what happened if you delete a calendar once. What are, what happened if you delete the same calendar multiple times? 
And actually, in Google emails, when you uh, invite someone to your calendar, they say, we have automatically added this calendar to your uh, calendar. So we basically can override all these meetings, and we, have to, we can actually force them to delete the calendars. So uh, we invite him like six times, and then he has all the meetings overridden. He would say, OK, I need to use my calendar, and they are overwriting all my meetings. I must delete them. So we make the user to delete the calendar in order to trigger this error message, which will have the XSS. So that's, uh, that's something like the usual apps or, uh, or uh, uh, scanners will never find. They cannot find something like that. Okay, so the second bug is uh, Google Analytics. Uh, so like I said, <coughs> client-side bugs are, uh, are extremely dangerous. So if someone can inject a Java code, JavaScript code to our, uh, to our client, that's a game over. But what if this someone is a very, in a very critical uh, role uh, in the organization you want to attack? So we know everybody is using uh, Google Analytics uh, to their, uh, integrated into their website. And we can actually check that. You can go to the, to the website and you can do a uh, view source. Once you do uh, the view source, you can see the Google Analytics JavaScript code. And you can make sure it's already installed in the website you want to attack. So we, we entered two random websites, I don't know, big websites, big scale websites that uses the Google Analytics. Uh, and we see that they are using the Google Analytics service. Okay, that's the first. But we want to attack those websites. We want to attack the owner of the website, not just to hack into his Google Analytics page. That's not interesting. We want to hack into his computer and then hack into his server. Okay, that's more interesting. And we can do that by targeting directly through Google Analytics. So what happens if you find an XSS in Google Analytics? We take full control of the website owner. That sounds like a good plan. So in-page analytics, in Google Analytics, for example, doesn't escape the incoming requests. So let's say we're sending a website URL. So you have a, a victim.com, OK? So you have victim.com, and the Google Analytics doesn't check the website URL. So let's say we are going into victim.com forward slash uh, insert script here. So uh, script alert XSS, you'll do it over there. That's it. Sounds like a very simple test. Uh, but OK, <laughs> Google doesn't, uh, uh, didn't check the uh, incoming request there. So basically, just by entering a website, you can see here, uh, it's Google.com here, but uh, imagine someone from Google.com checking this uh, analytics. This is a high-profile website, and it can mean a lot. So basically, what you need to do is to escape the, the, uh, the web URL, and then you insert your script here. You say, hello, Google administrator. And uh, basically, just in the URL, you're getting uh, in the, into the in-page analytics. So let's say uh, someone, when the, when the administrator uh, logins, that's uh, one possible vector to attack. So we can actively wait for him to log in, and you will never know what, he di what we did, because we uh, we actively waited for him. We did the attack, and then we wait till he logs in next time to the, to the in-page analytics, and then we basically can hack his computer uh, instead of just hacking the service, which is uh, very important but less uh, interesting in this specific scenario. And the other method we can use that is basically sharing. So we can infect our own Google Analytics, and then we can send someone a link. You know, We gave you a read-only access permissions to our analytics, you would say, what the fuck? Why do I have read-only permissions to your analytics? Do I know you? And you can actually click on the link. You will see the link. It's a very innocent clicking. You cannot see that it runs XSS, because the link would be without the XSS itself. Uh, once we shared it with him and sent him the link, it's game over. So let's go to the first method. The first method, we go to this URL with, uh, with the script uh, inside embedding the URL. Once the administrator log in, we can take full control of his computer. Uh, we wait, and that's it. Achievement unlocked. Um, this, okay. 
So this is this is how it runs. So once the administrator runs uh, the in-page analytics, you'll you'll find that this script runs. So we waited for the administrator. That's a high-profile attack. So uh, it's very critical one. The second one would be sharing uh, with the victim our our analytics. So like I said, we will we will we'll share. We're doing you a free will. We're giving you a free statistics about our website, which you probably don't care about. But once you get that invite, you would have to check what is it all about. What, why did someone just share his uh, own analytics with me? It must be a mistake. You will enter that link, and it's game over. So once we share with you the link and send you like a, a, a very innocent link, you'll see just, just a normal link. You can't see any XSS in it. Uh, we already inserted the XSS inside, so uh, you're already uh, vulnerable once you enter this link. So that's the second method of exploiting this vulnerability. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Google Feed Burner is a tool for uh, webmasters to create feeds in their uh, own uh, account. And uh, uh, we also found the stored XSS in uh, Google Feed Burner. Uh, in the picture, you can see that the feed title, uh, that I inject the XSS payload into the feed title of uh, FeedBoner, and just uh, create a feed, then call the feed with the XSS payload. And in the second picture, you can see that uh, nothing happened. There is no XSS in Google FeedBoner. Uh, you can see the feed title with our XSS payload, uh, image SRC, uh, on error, JavaScript alert, but nothing runs here. So we need to find a way to make this uh, vulnerability uh, exploited. So let's look closer on the features of uh, FeedBoner application. We have a feature called uh, email subscription. Email subscription allow us to subscribe to any feed that uh, we want to. And OK, so. We already know that there is a subscription feature in a feed burner. And uh, what about unsubscribe? What about if a user wants to unsubscribe to your feed? Uh, maybe this uh, can help us to make uh, this attack exploited. So in the picture, you can see the uh, across a scripting, a POC. Uh, when the victim uh, decides uh, to unsubscribe to our feed, uh, Google return us an uh, error message that, that say that if you are sure you want to unsubscribe your feed and then return us the XSS payload. And uh, when the victim will decide to unsubscribe, uh, stored XSS will be triggered on his account. So there is two ways to exploit uh, this vulnerability. One of them is uh, victim subscribe, then later decide to unsubscribe to your feed. And the second one is uh, send a, a link to a victim. Uh, the, it's important to say that the victim don't need to be subscribed to your feed. You can only send him an unsubscribe link, and uh, when the victim will click on your link, uh, stored XSS will be triggered on your account. OK. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorites. Um, so. Uh, Again, another service uh, I'm sure not many of you have heard about, uh, uh, Google Friend Connect. Uh, so this is another error-based message. Like you've seen in the first two, we use the sharing option uh, in order to find uh, vulnerabilities there. So it probably means the sharing option wasn't checked that properly uh, in all of the Google services. Uh, just saying, you know, um, uh, maybe next time you want to share something, uh, think about it. Um, so Google Friend Connect, uh, this is my favorite because it involves a bit of social engineering. Uh, you probably have seen many hot girls adding you on Facebook uh, recently with no any mutual friends and basically no other friends. So just a bot or something that has a very nice picture. Uh, so the attacker uh, would have a very nice hot picture uh, going to the victim and say, hey victim, let's be friends. And the victim would probably say, okay, this is a hot girl, <laughs> what can I do? Uh, 
let's let's add her as a friend. I mean, she wants to she wants to be friends with me. I don't know why, but I will I will add her. Uh, and I would, I would know it would work on 99% of the males in this room. Uh, so even if it's a security conference, you know what? Especially if it's a security conference. Um, so also we know the risks about heading hot girls to our Facebook or Google Friends Connect in this scenario. We, s we still do add those. Um, and the target will approve our request. Uh, the target will approve our request, but we added it as a, as a nice name. We had a nice name. Our name was Alicia something, or, a, or a, I don't know, you choose uh, some kind of a, a normal, uh, normal female name. But after we finish that, we want to make him delete us. We want to make him uh, to, to not be happy with our uh, relationship. Uh, so once he finds out this is not a real female, he would probably want to delete it. But we, want, we, we must encourage him because people are not using the delete option as often as you would imagine. Uh, so it can be very easily, uh, for example, if you're using Facebook, I'm sure you've added lots of friends uh, or people that you call friends, uh, but you never really unfriended with someone. So if you're unfriended with someone, it must be like a real big deal in order to uh, remove him as a friend. It's like a message. I'm removing you as a friend. You're not welcome anymore. So it's not something you do in your daily life. We must force him to do that. So we will spam him. But once we do that, we'll like make sure he's not very happy with our relationship at all. Uh, so we will spam him as much as possible in any way. But before we do that, we'll change our, na our name. We'll not be Alicia or uh, some kind of other female name anymore. We'll be script alert XSS uh, name. Uh, so we'll change our name uh, and then we'll make him hate us. Uh, in every possible way until he unfriend with us. Once he unfriend with us, uh, then he will, he will go to this screen. He will not see the whole, like you can see, he will, he will not see the whole name. So that's good for us. But once he, re he clicks remove as friend, uh, it's game over and it's another achievement unlocked. So don't friend with people you don't know. That's the Google Null is a web service that allows to users uh, publish their own documents. Uh, most of the users of Google Null is uh, medical users and uh, research users. And uh, it's an online uh, knowledge portal. Uh, in Google Null, uh, you have two privacy options. One is a published document. That it means that uh, every user can access to your uh, published document. And the other one is the unpublished document. Unpublished document means that, that your document is uh, private. Only you got access to your uh, unpublished document. And uh, no one else can access to them. Uh, in the picture, you can see the process of uh, uh, unpublished document. Uh, a user uh, writes his own document and then decides to unpublish. And uh, in the second picture, you can see that if someone else trying to access to your unpublished document, you receive a, a message from Google that say the request null is uh, currently not published. It means that the, the, the document is private, only you can access, and uh, no one else can. Okay, so Google validates uh, our permission. Uh, they denied us from uh, viewing the uh, unpublished document. So uh, what can we do? We need to find a, a creative way to bypass the permission validation of Google. Uh, let's meet our new friend, uh, Google Null Translator Toolkit. Uh, Google Null Translator Toolkit is a tool that allows to user uh, translate their own uh, documents. You just need to provide the, the URL of the specific uh, uh, document that you want to be translated. And upload it to, to and upload it to uh, the translation tool. 
Uh, in the picture, you can see that the attacker uh, provides the URL of the unpublished document and then uploads it to the translator tool. And let's wait and see what happens. Okay. So, in the picture, you can see that the translator do the job for us. The translator access to the unpublished document because Google Translator uh, tool have uh, permission to access to any document in the application. And they didn't validate that if the uh, document is published or unpublished. So I use the tool of Google Translator to access any unpublished uh, documents in a Google Null uh, service. Okay, so <clears throat> probably Google Null is another service you didn't know that was existed. Um, okay, Google Affiliate Network. This is more a common uh, uh, service. So uh, I know more people that uses it, but maybe it's because uh, uh, the, the people I know are uh, uh, different. Um, so Google Affiliate Network, uh, stored XSS <coughs> and uh, administrator privileges so we'll do the both, but they're actually very well connected to the same bug. Uh, so we will see it now. So what is Google Affiliate Network? That's a very good question. Uh, they gave us the answer. Uh, Google Affiliate Network is a free program that makes it easy for website publishers to connect with quality advertisers to get rewarded for driving conversations. Uh, so we are actually doing a commercial for Google here. Um, I'm sure they don't need us for doing those commercials. But this is what the service does. And we'll use it to bypass those permissions. We'll use it to do whatever we want in their service. So first of all, uh, our goals are, we have two different goals. We have an XSS, an account, so we can basically uh, uh, not just steal his account. Stealing his account is not much of a matter once we have the second goal which is gaining administrative privilege on his account. So we don't need the XSS to actually steal his account. But we can use it to hack his computer, so that's good. Um, so like, like I said, Google has acquired many, many companies. Uh, and like you can see here, uh, the website that is, that is here is Connect Commerce. Connect Commerce was actually part of Performix, which was acquired by DoubleClick which was acquired by Google. So Google has uh, received a bug from DoubleClick that received a bug from Performic. Uh, and nobody checks it in the way. So basically, the first attack is, is very simple. Uh, we change the link ID. And once we change the link ID and we are already authenticated, we can see other people's uh, links. Once we do that, we can. Uh, change, so this is a permission issue basically. But once we can change someone else's link, we can also uh, change someone else's text within this link. Once we change that text within his link, uh, we injected an XSS to his account without his knowledge. So the permission issue was elevated into, or down uh, or the other way, uh, to, uh, to, to an XSS. So uh, this is basically a permission issue and not an XSS, but this website was so vulnerable that you could have also seen uh, a real XSS in his account. Uh, so the first one would be manipulating parameters on connectcommerce.com domain uh, in order to inject the XSS payload on google.com domain. So once we change the link ID and use our partner ID, or, uh, we can change the script uh, uh, the, the text there to have a script and basically game over. Once he connects to his account, that's it. Uh, so this is the first uh, POC for uh, for this website. Uh, the second attack is actually more uh, more effective. Uh, why hack into somebody's account via an XSS when, can, when you can directly access his account? That's even better, right? Um, so, manipulating the parameters in order to get administrative privilege on any Google affiliate account, that sounds like a very good jackpot. Um, so, you can basically manipulate 
the user ID uh, to, so once you want to change someone's uh, email uh, and you're already authenticated, then someone had thought, oh, it should be okay if I can update someone else's email uh, or account to my email. I don't know why, it thought I was okay. It, it looks like an architecture uh, design bug. Uh, but it thought that should work well, probably. And uh, it did work well for us. So once we use his account ID and we change it to our email and we're already authenticated, then uh, the server would say, okay, I'm allowing you to change your account uh, to my email. And they thought that would be cool, so we did that. Um, and that was a, a game over uh, for them, and that was a elite vulnerability, so uh, it, th this was considered a, a good one uh, among uh, Google. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Google Picnic Service. Uh, Google Picnic Service is like service like Instagram service. Did someone heard about Instagram? It's allow you to edit your photos uh, online. Uh, they use uh, a photos GUI. For example, you can make effects on your on uh, on your picture, and you can edit it uh, online. Uh, Google Picnic service is a is a part of Google. It's uh, hosted on Google services server and uh, it's one of the most popular services in Google in a photos, photos uh, service. Uh, okay. Uh, if you look in uh, picnic.com, uh, you see that the uh, application is kind of secure. What is meant secure? There is, mean there is no issues in picnic.com. Uh, if someone trying to find vulnerabilities, uh, you only see uh, flash files on the server, for example, and uh, he can't inject any uh, malicious uh, payload. So it seems to be secure. So we need to find a way to uh, crack the, the application, to find a way to hack the, the picnic server. So we start with a brute force attack. Uh, in brute force attack, you can also brute force for uh, files, for example, if you want to find the new files on the on the service that you are going to check, uh, you can find the new directories with a brute force. Uh, you can also perform a brute force attack on a, on a subdomains. For example, b.picnic.com, uh, e.picnic.com. So you can use the, the brute force attack uh, to find the new subdomains in the server. And also a port scanning, you can scan the, the IP find some uh, new ports, and uh, that's all. So we found that there is a subdomain called vpn.picnic.com. Uh, this subdomain, uh, I think that no one is using it on, in Google. I don't know why this uh, subdomain uh, is alive. But uh, we found there is a PHP application uh, on this subdomain. Uh, but first of all, we just uh, ping the VPN to see on which server uh, picnic.com uh, hosted. So uh, we saw that uh, picnic.com hosted on a Google server. In the picture, you can see that uh, it's hosted from uh, in a Google. So what was the story of the VPN picnic? Uh, it seems that someone installed by mistake an older version of a PHP list. A PHP list is an email application. A PHP list also suffers from a lot of vulnerabilities, critical vulnerabilities. And okay. Okay. We also found that uh, they use PHP list with a default username and password. It was a very big mistake. Uh, and uh, we also found that PHP list is uh, vulnerable to a local file inclusion. A uh, local file inclusion vulnerability uh, allow us to get a shell on the on Google server, uh, take uh, full control on the server. Uh, you can see that uh, it suffers, it's, uh, suffers from uh, well-known vulnerabilities. Uh, 
uh, local file inclusion, uh, SQL injection you have in uh, PHP list, uh, XSS, all the web attacks, I think. So the person who installed PHP list, I uh, think he got fired because it's, uh, to be honest, I was kind of surprised to see that there is a PHP list application on Google server with a default, default username and password. It's, it's, and uh, in the picture, you can see the POC of the local file inclusion on the Google server. You can see that uh, uh, we get a shell with a lit bounty. Uh, 3133.7, it's uh, the most uh, higher price for uh, bug findings in Google service. And it seems that the picnic is over. Uh, this is the POC email that we get from uh, uh, Google that uh, we determined that this was uh, exploitable and could have lead to a full server uh, compromise. And uh, that's all. So you would you would probably imagine that if you want to hack into Google, you'd have to use uh, zero days and send them via email and be named as the Chinese government. But uh, you can actually find like a vpn.picnic.com and hack to that through that to Google.com with the default username and password. Um, so what we want to say first is uh, we we love Google. They, they are, uh, I think we, they're doing a great job and uh, uh, we reported all those bugs so we didn't actually release any vulnerabilities to the public. It's very important to us that uh, uh, no one will get hurt from those uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, so we work with Google, not against Google. Uh, and they have bigger guns than we do so we don't want to make them upset. Um, uh, but we're good friends. Uh, so in order to hack into Google, you have to do several stuff. Or not just Google, but any bug bounty. So it's, this was just an example of, of just a big bug bounty program that has multiple servers, uh, multiple servers, multiple services, multiple uh, uh, extensions and, and whatnot. It's like a very big company, so it's just a very good example for a bug bounty program. But we could have done it in any other uh, company. So if you have a big company and you have a lot of mess, you should start uh, reorganizing that stuff because you don't need a zero day to hack into a company. You only need a default password to hack into your company. That's all it takes. Uh, so protect against that. That's very important. Uh, so in order to find bugs in those services, as you have seen, it was always the same issues. It was unsubscribe button, it was the sharing option, and it was other options that are very repetitive in all the services. So you wouldn't find bugs in, in the normal one step uh, to the application. You wouldn't find bugs in the calendar name if you just uh, do it, I don't know, what with that. But if you share it with someone, then it would take a, a whole different scenario nobody else checked before. If you go through the path nobody else checked before, then you might have a chance of finding a, a really good vulnerabilities and a lot of them in a very short time. So that's very important. You have to think different. Uh, information gathering is also very important. So like you have seen the acquisition stuff. Uh, if you get some more than just the basic information, it's all out there, it's all uh, open, I mean, it's all in the internet. You can use Google to find information about Google. That's very, uh, uh, I like it. <laughs> so uh, mixed services. So once you share with one service to another, uh, you get like like they're doing you a favor. We automatically edit his calendar to your calendar, for example. Thank you. That, that was very good for me that you did that. Um, so mixed services is also uh, a good spot to look at. And permission bypass. You can see in multiple services that the permission was not properly checked. That actually you can see that in lots of companies. So if you're having uh, permissions in your uh, web applications, you should. You should take a deeper and closer look into that because that's not something uh, the usual uh, scanners would, would find because they cannot basically or not that easily. Uh, there's some reference to some links uh, you might want to check out later. And uh, we might have one more so it's not over yet. Um, maybe, just maybe, it's not a good idea to follow our blogs. Uh, because uh, 
<laughs> this is what can happen <laughs> to you. Okay, okay. One, uh, you want to do uh, this one? Uh, the last vulnerability uh, is the uh, HTTP parameter pollution in a uh, blogger. Uh, this vulnerability allow me to uh, gain an administrator on any blogger account. Uh, most of you heard about blog, Blogspot, WordPress. So Blogspot and uh, WordPress, WordPress is the most uh, popular uh, uh, blog services. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can be administrator of any uh, blogger account. Okay, so we didn't put it ahead. It will take like uh, 30 seconds to prepare. So please forgive us ahead. In this video, I act to a Zook blog. I act to his uh, own uh, his own blog. Uh, okay. So, in Blogger, every uh, every user in Blogger have a user ID. Uh, blogger ID, I mean. It means that me is, uh, for example, blog ID one, and Zook is uh, blog ID two. So every user in the Blogger service got his own uh, uh, Blogger ID. So. In Blogger, I found that if a user provides duplicate fields, what does it mean duplicate? It means if you have, for example, in the post request uh, blog ID uh, one, and I uh, duplicate the field with another blog ID until, for example, blog ID one and then blog ID two. So the server uh, see the blog ID one and they say, okay, it's secure, blog ID one, I, it's okay. But instead, it executes the other field. So, for example, blog ID 2. So, in this kind of manipulation uh, attack, I was able to bypass the permission checks in a blogger service and uh, becoming an administrator of any uh, blogger account. Now you can see the, po uh, the post request. I just uh, duplicate the blog ID field with uh, uh, one more uh, blog ID uh, value. Uh, this is my own account, okay, uh, with my own permission. Uh, now I I'm add uh, a user to my blog to give him a permission and intercept the request to modify the request. So in the request, you can see there is a blog ID with a value two one zero three three five three five and uh, at the end, uh, zero 02. And now I duplicate with another blog ID field. This blog ID is, is the blog ID of Zook, okay? Uh, Zook also have a, a user in a, in a blogger, so I provide the blog ID of Zook. And after I modify the request, I send the request to the server. Let's wait and see what happens. Okay, so now I'm logging to my Gmail. I need to get a notification that someone uh, had, has been added to an administrator. Just need to provide my own password. And now I'm added myself to a Zook blog with uh, other permission. But, yeah. And uh, now I'm, the second step is to be administrator of uh, Zook blog. So let's see. We intercept another request and manipulate the, the blog ID value, duplicate it. This is the original uh, request, the post request. And 
this attack is kind of complicated, but if you get the idea of how to uh, use this kind of tricks, so it's uh, it's more easy to understand. But okay, so now I'm uh, other on uh, in a Zook blog. Now I want to make me administrator, so I'm intercept the, the the second request. But first of all, I need to find another uh, value, uh, the member ID. Everyone has a member ID, so I need to retrieve the member ID of Zook before I'm doing the, the admin attack. changing the values. Okay, so now I have a URL with uh, with the blog ID of Zook and the member ID of Zook. Just need to send it to the server uh, to see what happens. You see, there is a grant admin uh, privilege. So now I replace uh, my blog ID with his own, with the uh, Zook blog ID. So now he has the grant permissions to himself for my blog, blog. And uh, let's send this request to uh, blogger server. Okay, so now you can see that I'm the administrator of uh, Zook blog. You can see in my test blog that Zook blog uh, has been shown in, in my own account. So, okay, now I can edit his blog, delete his blog post, uh, do everything that I want. I've got access to all the uh, options in his uh, in, in his uh, in uh, Zook blog, and that's all. Tonight we're having a small event, Hacking the Empire. Uh, so it's a limited event, so if you want to uh, get an invite, uh, just uh, send us uh, this email. Um, thank you very much, it was a pleasure. Guys, anyone want to have some questions for him for this good presentation? I just wonder, how do you work? Do you work alone? Do you work together? Uh, is it what what happens to, to make these ideas pop into your head? To, to that that the ideas pop into your head to, to make these strange. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, basically, Neil started this whole project doing uh, uh, assessment on Google, and I joined him uh, for uh, some stages of this research and we try to find, uh, I instead of just attacking certain stuff, we try to think ahead of what other people never had thought of. What would, ne what functionalities, we mapped the functionalities, we saw uh, what functionalities nobody else is ever using, like unfriend or sharing. Uh, so that's, that's how we did it. No questions? Thank you.